Because God is still on the throne. And whatever he says, he backs up with his power. He has said it. That you'll be blessed. He has said it. That your expectation will be fulfilled. He has said it. That every mountain will move away from your life from your family and from everyone there today in Jesus' name. His word cannot fail. His power cannot fail. The authority of the name of Jesus cannot fail. And the power of the Holy Ghost cannot fail. And as he says, you believe it will be done for me for me for me it is done father we thank you today and bless your name thank you for your people thank you for the faith you have put in our hearts and thank you lord for great things mighty things happening here today I pray, Lord, here and everywhere we are connected, power manifestation. Yes. Miracles in every life. Yes. That tonight really will be a night of wonder for everyone in Jesus' name. Yes. You've done it before, you'll do it again. Yes. Your mercy, your love, the power, yes. miracle, yes. will follow after everyone. Yes. Well, thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we come to our night of supernatural wonders. I need an amen there. And the Lord who has always been walking, every time we call on him, and we call through the name of Jesus Christ, tonight he will work wonders in your life in Jesus' name. And we need to know, how do we receive wonders? As for God giving it, no doubt. As for God's ability, no doubt at the possibilities we have in God, that God is able, able to do all things, able to do everything, no doubt. Where we have the challenge and we need to work on is how do we receive the supernatural wonder of the Lord. Tonight, I'm talking to everyone on receiving supernatural wonders now, and always it's one thing to receive it now it's another thing to receive it henceforth every day every time every time there's a need or challenge in your life that you know how to link up with god and how to plug to the everlasting power of the lord and receive so we're talking about receiving supernatural wonders now and always in Joshua chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. Joshua chapter 3, we're looking at verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. The Lord will do wonders. That's a promise. That's a prophecy. And that is certain because God is a God of wonders and Joshua assured the people these are the people that have gone through a period of 40 years of unbelief and now he said turn around sanctify yourselves separate yourself and stand firm on the word the Lord is giving today, sanctify yourself, purify yourself, make yourself holy, 
and take away everything, every defilement and everything that will hinder the flow of supernatural wonders into your life. Once you do that, there is no shadow of doubt in the heart of the leader, Joshua, that God will do you wonders in your life. It says, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord, the God of wonders, the God of power, the God of all possibilities will do you wonders among you. Look at verse 7 there. In verse 7, and the Lord said unto Joshua, this day, somebody shout this day. Yeah. Will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel? The Lord says, in the sight of all the people in your community, today, he'll begin to magnify you. In the sight of the people that have belittled you and made you common and think that you are just one of the crowd, one of the multitude, he says, today, it will begin to magnify you. As you believe, it will happen. That they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. He was with Moses, no disappointment, he'll be with you. He was with Daniel, no disappointment, he will be with you. He was with Paul the Apostle, with Peter. He was with the people that leaned on him, depended on him, confided in him. All those years in the past, he says, as I was with the men and the women of God in the past, in the same way, he will be with you in Jesus' name. And when Moses appeared before the Lord, the Lord answered him. And as you appear before the Lord tonight, the Lord is going to answer you. In Psalm 77, verse 11. Psalm 77, verse 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. That's what you do when you come to pray. That's what you do when you're expecting something from the Lord. You remember what he has done in the past. He says, I will remember the works of the Lord, the wonders of the Lord, the miracles of the Lord, the supernatural manifestation of the Lord. He did in the past. He says, surely I will remember the words, the wonders of old. And that's what you do. You recollect. You remind yourself of the great wonders he did in the past. And you remember God says, I am God, I change not. And because he changes not, what he has done in the past, he healed in the past, he will do it in your life. He opened the eyes of the blind in the past. He made the dead to hear and the dumb to speak and the lame to rise up and walk. He said, all you need to do is to remember the wonders of old and a repetition will come up in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, I will meditate also on all thy work. A problem is we meditate on the appearance of the enemy. We meditate on the challenges we're having. And the more we think about the challenges we're having, and the more we think about what we're going through and what we've gone through in the past, the more the thing would expand, the more it will become weightier. But it says, I'm not going to think of my pain. I'm not going to think of my sickness. I'm not going to think about my challenges. I'm not going to think about all the things that confront me. But I will think about, I will meditate also on all thy work and talk of thy doings. When you talk about that sickness and you describe and you expand, and you explain, and you talk, talk, and talk of the problem. It begins to magnify, but when you kill it by silence, 
you keep quiet about that and you're talking about and you're magnifying and talking about the doings of the lord the doings of the lord have become so great and so weighty and so mighty in your life all those things you had before even tonight they'll vanish away in jesus name. look at verse 13 in verse 13 it says thy way O god is in the sanctuary who is so great a god as our god when you think about that your problem becomes smaller your sickness becomes smaller your challenges become smaller because you are thinking about the greatness of our god you're thinking about the power irresistible power of our god it says in verse 14 verse 14 says thou art the god that doest wonders not only that you did today thou art the god that doest wonders in your life this very moment tonight this very night i miss a good evening there amen. thou art the god that doest wonders thou hast declared thy strength among the people the strength of the lord he declared unto you tonight and it will take your problems away receiving supernatural wonders now and always three things we're looking at number one simple ways to receiving supernatural wonders some people think it's hard it's difficult if i'm going to receive supernatural wonders no simple ways to receiving supernatural wonders number two simplified ways by explanation by exposition by application as you look at the word of god you simplify it for yourself that this is a way simplified to restoring supernatural wonders number three is step by step step by step ways to retaining super breakthrough wonders breakthrough in your life breakthrough in your family breakthrough in your business in the work of your hand even at this difficult time in the nation and in many nations breakthrough coming for you in jesus name step by step one two three four you are there number one number one simple ways to receiving supernatural wonders it tells us in psalm 71 in psalm 71 reading from verse 7 i am as a wonder unto many i thought you'll say that for yourself not only amen repeat that i am as a wonder unto many let the heavens hear you. You understand? That was David. And Saul was chasing him and chasing him. And David always escaped. And then Saul hanged his head. Why can't I get this David? I want to catch him and he'll never catch you. I want to get him and he'll never get you. I want to destroy him and they'll never destroy you they say he is there go for him go for him by the time they get there he has escaped danger i want to announce to you this year for the rest of your life you will escape danger i am as a wonder unto many but thou art my strong refuge thou art my strong refuge he so believed in god that he was overwhelmed covered enveloped by god and god became a city of refuge that no hand evil hand could ever touch him no evil hand will ever touch you look at verse eight in verse eight let my mouth be filled 
reproach with thy praise and with thy honor all the day when you praise the Lord he inhabits the praises of his people and when he inhabits the praises of his people all your prison doors are wide open and the foundations of the prison they'll be shaking to the foundation in Jesus name look at verse 14 there in verse 14 it says but I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. It tells us in verse 17 there, in verse 17, O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wonders, thy wonderful words. So when you keep on declaring, when you keep on explaining, when you keep on proclaiming, when you keep on pronouncing the wonders of the Lord, what you say will be your realization. Yeah. You don't talk about the devil, talk about God. God will come to your age. You don't talk about demons, talk about our deliverer. Deliverance will come to you in Jesus' name. You don't talk about what they have done, what they are doing, what they can do. You talk about what the Almighty God can do in your life. And the fulfillment of the pronouncement, proclamation, the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. It tells us in verse 21, in verse 21, thou shalt increase my greatness I want to say that for myself thou shalt increase my greatness I want to say that again for myself this year will become different from every other year in your life thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side and comfort me on every side and comfort me on every side look at verse 22 in verse 22 i will also praise thee with the sceptre even thy truth O oh my god unto thee will i sing with the harp O oh thou holy one of israel verse 23 in verse 23 my lips shall greatly rejoice when i sing unto thee it says my lips shall greatly rejoice you know there are people that have two levels well the mouth they're singing well, their heart, they're entertaining sorrow, they're entertaining unbelief, they're entertaining doubt. But he says, My heart, my spirit, my mouth, my lips, everyone will be united in praising the Lord. And when your whole being within and without, when they're united in praising the Lord, the praises of the Lord will bring wonders in your life, wonders in your prayer wonders in your pronouncement and wonders in every part of your life in jesus name and it says and my soul which thou has redeemed it tells us in verse 24 in verse 24 my tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long for they are confounded for they are brought unto shame that seek my heart. Look at chapter 22 of Job. We're talking about simple ways to receiving supernatural wonders. In Job chapter 22 verse 21, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, thereby Good shall come unto thee. Good shall come unto me. Going out, coming in, good shall come unto me. Anywhere, everywhere I go, because I acquaint myself with him. I know him, I love him, I believe him, and I take his word to be as true today as it ever was. Because of that, 
good shall come unto me. Verse 22. In verse 22, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart. A kind of empty out of your heart all the words of men all the terrifying words of men all the harassing words of men all the threatening words of men kind of expunge them empty your heart empty your life empty your mind of the words of men and then store in your heart lay up his words in your heart that word will do good in your life. And in verse 23, verse 23, if thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. That's a simple way to have supernatural wonder in your life, that you return with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You return unto the Almighty. And then you say, put, thou shalt put away iniquity far from the tabernacles i wanted an amen there amen. Uh, you understand that i want you to think about this in your life if you have this thing let's call it a and then you have this other thing let's call it b a is occupying too much space in your life too much space in your thinking and too much space in your destiny. A is taking too much time, too much thought, too much thinking, and too much planning, and it's weighing down on your life. B does not have a place there. And so, and you want B, I'm talking of A, the atrocities. I'm talking of A, the agony. I'm talking about A, all those anti-progress things in your life. But we're talking about B. And B does not have enough chance to occupy in your life. What you do is you empty your box, you empty your life of A. Take all those atrocities away and take all those iniquities away and take away all those things that are having anti-progress effect in your life. Take them away so that we can create time, we can create space for the blessings of God in your life. That is what we always do. There's dirty water in the bucket. I need that bucket for clean, good water. I have to pour that water away. There are too many, uh, you know, maybe bad things and dust and refuse in a particular place. I want to plant some good things there. I have to remove the refuse. If there is sin, if there's iniquity, if there's anything that is not allowing the blessing of God to settle down in your life, you empty your life, you empty your heart of all those things and then you bring in the blessings of the Lord put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle look at verse 24 in verse 24 then shall thou lay up gold as dust that's called prosperity poverty will live your life prosperity will take its place and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Look at verse 25. It says here, The Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have, tell me yourself, plenty of silver. Who is that? Do you really believe? Be it unto you according to your faith. And then in verse 26, it says, For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty. Thou shalt lift up thy face unto God. Verse 27, it says, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. And, 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 praise the Lord tonight, you will hear you. 
Thou shalt pay thy vows. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, thou shalt also decree a thing. What are you decreeing tonight? What are you saying to the Lord tonight? This is me. And according to your word, this I decree. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. Amen. Darkness, get out of your life. Amen. Pass of darkness, out of your life. Amen. All the agents of darkness, out of your family. And all those, uh, uh, you know, my, all those imaginations and manipulations of darkness out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Because now something good must happen tonight in your life. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. It says, be strong. I will be strong. Be strong in the, in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Look at verse 11. It says in verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Do you know you can stand? Do you know you will stand? The winds will blow, but you will stand. The ages will try to rush after you, but you will stand. And all the things that the devil could, you know, bring up, manufacture, they'll try to stand against your progress. But tonight, I'm here to tell you from the Lord, it's time for you to stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil. In verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, and you are going to conquer them all. Verse 13, in verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day the evil day will not conquer you the evil day will not blindfold you the evil day will not stop your progress the evil days will not blow you down and the evil powers will not overcome you in jesus name it says that he may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, tell me. Having done all, it means having conquered all those enemies, you stand and you're saying, let another one come as I conquered in the name of the Lord. All those ones flat on the ground, I'll conquer them again. Let any sickness come as I conquered all the past sicknesses. This one, I will conquer it again. And maybe there's any sickness, there's any infirmity there as we have conquered in the past tonight. I call the name of Jesus upon your sickness. I call the name of Jesus upon the mountain and the problem you have. And that thing must live today. Because it says, having done all to stand. Can I apply that to myself? Uh, you know, for myself, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, and then I'm wondering, uh, am I not tired? I'm not, am I not weary? Am I not weak? Can I do any other thing? I will stand. I will stand. Uh, you know, sometimes when you, you know, you fight against this and fight against that and praise the Lord, you overcome, you conquer them and the devil thinks because you've conquered one, two, and three, you must be tired now. And so he comes and you are still standing. I said you are still standing. You will not be weak. You will not be weary. 
and nothing will overcome or prevail over your life in Jesus name having done all to stand every temptation you overcome and you are still standing every opposition you overcome and you are still standing every weakness of the mind every sickness in the body every challenge that comes in the day or night you have been fighting and fighting you overcome you will still be standing Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, above all, above all. Anytime you are going out, you need to take this and take this and take this. Remember, after you've taken every other thing, above all. Every time you're traveling, you know the way the road is in this, in our country and maybe other countries, and you've taken this, this and that, above all, there's something else you need to take. Anywhere, you're meeting a friend, you're meeting an enemy, you're meeting a challenge, and there is something, you know, you want to go and do. You're going for an interview above all, taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith, where we ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Are you able? Will you be able with faith, all things are possible. With faith, all problems are solvable. With faith, all mountains are movable. With faith, all prayers are answerable. And it says above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the furry works of the devil. That's of the devil. Verse 17. In verse 17 it says, And take the helmet of salvation, the assurance of salvation, the evidence of salvation, the experience of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In verse 18, praying always. How often do you pray? I said, how often do you pray? Now, you don't have to kneel down all the time. You can be walking with your eyes open. You can pray and God will answer. You can be lying down and then you pray. Do you remember Jonah? Jonah was in the whale, in the belly of the whale. And in that condition, he wasn't standing or kneeling. He was just there. He didn't even know the direction in which he was. And he prayed and God answered his prayer. God will answer your prayer. I remember I was, you know, traveling from... Nigeria to, I think, U.S. or somewhere. But we stopped because we had to change place in France, in uh, Paris. And I was carrying that time. I didn't have, you know, people traveling with me all the time. Now I do. Things have changed now for the better. Things will change for the better in your life. But I was carrying my, you know, hand luggage, and another person was there in the plane, and then got, got down, was also, you know, what the tarmac, and she ran by my side and said, Pastor, Pastor, are you Pastor so-and-so? I said, um, you know, by the grace of God, I am. You will not deny your name. And she said, can I have an appointment with you? I said, why? Oh, she said, I've been trying to come and see you at Bagada, old Bagada, new Bagada now. And uh, so I said, but uh, what's it you are looking for? She said, I've been married, and she told me so many years she had been married and no child. I said, hey, you don't need any appointment. I said, well, I need up. I said, no, the appointment is here. He said, 
at the tarmac as we are walking. I said, I didn't allow her to finish, uh, you know, questioning of unbelief. We were still opening her eyes and we were walking. And I said, in Jesus' name, Lord, this woman needs a baby, miracle baby. Give the baby to her in Jesus' name. And then I said, bye-bye, the Lord has answered your prayer. Tonight, bye-bye, the Lord has answered your prayer. One year after, she came to the Thursday meeting at Magada. You will come back again. And she came over here to give testimony and said, I met the pastor, we had an appointment at the tarmac walking. I didn't close my eyes, he didn't close his eyes, and he prayed, and God answers. The same pastor is still here. The same God of heaven is still answering prayer. And your prayers are answered in Jesus' name. My point is praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. When you pray in the Spirit, it doesn't matter whether you're sitting or standing, whether you're lying down or whatever posture, in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Tonight, every prayer you pray will be a prayer in the Spirit. You will not mind the pain, you will not mind the medical report, you will not mind the history of the case. Just pray, not according to the medical report, not according to what you feel in the body. Pray in the spirit. You are expecting a miracle, you will get a miracle. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. It says, and watching thereunto with perseverance and supplication for all saints. Your answer has now come. Yeah. We're looking at number two here. Number two, we're looking at simplified ways to restoring superseding wonders. Superseding wonders in Judges chapter 6, reading from verse 13. Gideon said unto him, unto the angel, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, it says, if the Lord really is with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles? that our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt with miracles? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Look at the next verse there. In verse 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? The Lord is sending you forth. Not only that, your own problems will be solved, you'll be a solution to the problems of other people. A solution to the problems of your family. A solution to the problem in your company. A solution to the problems in your country. Is that possible? Gideon thought, not possible, not me. I don't have that position. I don't have that power. And there's no possibility that the problems of, of Israel as a nation will be solved through me. But the Lord is saying to you today, go forth, you'll be a solution to the questions that people are asking. In verse 15, in verse 15, and he said unto him, O oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least 
in my father's house. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, and the Lord said unto him, Surely, 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 as we're going out tonight, surely. As you wake up tomorrow morning, surely. As you are confronted by any challenge and you rise up to the challenge and you have to solve the problem, surely. As you want to pray for any member of your family, your wife, your husband, your children, surely. And as you pray for any friend to solve any problem, tell me, surely, surely, the Lord said, I will be with thee. I will be with thee. Anywhere you go, anything that confronts you, I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. A new day for Gideon. A new day for you. Deuteronomy chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 12. Simplified steps to restoring superseding wonders. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, wherefore it shall come to pass. It will happen. It shall come to pass. If ye hearken, to, the, to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God is he your God? Are you saved? Yes. Are you born again? Are you a child of God? In the day, in the night, are you a child of God? Then the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and the Lord will take away from thee. How many sicknesses? The Lord will take away, tell me, all sickness. The sickness that ran in the family. And daddy said, I'm dying. Take care of the rest of the children. That sickness will not come to you. The sickness that had run in, you know, medical terms, they say, you know, it runs in the family. And as it's running, it catches everybody in the family. Except me. Except me. They say, you know, all your uncles and all the other people, they became blind by the age of 40, 42, 45. And now you are 44. And it's coming. Not me. Not me. Whatever you say no to, heaven will say no. It says the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none, none, none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee. But he will lay them upon them that hate thee. Amen. The Lord fulfill his word in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19. Verse 19, it says, The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs, and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the stretch out arm, whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out. So shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people to whom thou art afraid. 
Unfortunately, the children of Israel said they didn't know. You, you know, they, they didn't have the uh, way, the two-way communication. Meanwhile, the people in Canaan were afraid of them because they had heard the great things the Lord had done, and they were afraid of the people. You will not be afraid anymore in Jesus' name. I will not be afraid anymore. You know, sometimes we we'll say that, but when the robber comes to meet the road, and events begin to happen, and the things that used to make you afraid, they come. Then you begin to tremble, but you must remember, you have said before the Lord, I will not be afraid anymore. I will not be afraid anymore. And the things that got you worried, fretting in the past, Everything conquered in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 89. Psalm 89. I'm reading from verse 5. In Psalm 89, reading from verse 5. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders. O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Look at verse 6 there. In verse 6 it says, For who? in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord. Verse 7 verse 7 says God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be urged in reverence of all them that I about him. And then he tells us in verse 8, O Lord God of hosts, who is strong? Who is a stronger Lord like unto thee? For to thy faithfulness round about thee. Verse 9, in verse 9, thou rulest the region of the sea. Every region of the sea in your life, the Lord rules on each and each. When the waves thereof arise, ar arise, thou stillest them. Peace be still. Your heart, peace be still. Your mind, peace be still. In that storm, in your family, as if the ocean is going to break the boat, the sheep, the family. Peace be still tonight. Everything that tries itself to scatter, to shatter your family or your company or the work of your hand, peace, calmness tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, it tells us there, my covenant will I not break. The storm cannot break the covenant the Lord has made with us. Difficulties, challenges, problems, sickness, demons, wherever they are, they cannot break the covenant the Lord has made with you. My covenant will I not break nor alter the sin that has gone out of my lips. Wonders. Wonders. Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 43 first. Acts chapter 2, verse 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. By the apostles. For the people, by the apostles. In the people, by the apostles. Everyone, literally, everyone received wonders by the apostles. Who are those people? Look at verse 38. In verse 38, and Peter then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. These people, they were sinners, they were to repent, and the moment they repented, they were baptized in the name of Jesus, and wonders were done in them, for them, by the apostles. Everyone, everyone, as you repent, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is your Lord and Savior. The wonders to be done by the apostles will be for you. Yeah. Will be in you. Yeah. Verse 39. Verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Give me a good day. Amen. Yeah. The wonders were done by the apostles for these people. The promise is unto you. And for you tonight, wonders are done for you. Yeah. And to your children, and to their children. Your children, if you brought your children, wonders for them tonight. Yeah. If they're sick at home, or if maybe something kept them at home, not sickness, maybe homework or whatever, wonders will reach them from here and it says and for those who are far off remember wonders by the apostles for the people in the people the people that are far off they're not even in a congregation here tonight they are online or in various congregations wonders are going to happen to them by the apostles in jesus name Look at verse 40. In verse 40, it says, and with many other words, uh, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves, separate yourselves from this untoward generation. The people that are just separating themselves from this evil generation, wonders for them, wonders in them by the Apostles, look at verse 40. Uh, verse 40, it says, verse 41, rather now, in verse 41, then did the Galilee receive its word. They were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000. So these are the people, these are the people that the wonders done by the apostles, the wonders were for them, and the wonders are for you tonight. Look at verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. These are the people. They remain. They tarry. And the fellowship of the apostles and the wonders were done by the apostles for them who continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and continued in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in every verse you feed in. Your seat is there. Your place is there. You are in the fellowship. The, the wonders done by the apostles will be done for you. In you. And you carry your wonders, your miracle back home tonight in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three now. Step by step ways to retaining super breakthrough wonders. What you receive, you will retain. What is restored to you tonight, you will retain. This wonder will be permanent in your life. Healing, permanent in your life. Deliverance, permanent in your life. I have one quarter of the people saying, Amen. Your amen will attract wonders into your life. Step by step ways to retaining super breakthrough wonders. Look at Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 3. It says, long time therefore abode they speaking boldly. In the Lord, now, when you're speaking of the Lord, in the Lord, for the Lord, 
your voice must carry authority. You're speaking for the Lord. You're speaking in the Lord. You're speaking about the Lord. It says they abode there long time. They didn't mind whatever wind may be blowing around, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders tonight, and granted signs and wonders every day, and granted signs and wonders always to be done by their hands. Done. When? Where? In your life? In your heart? In your body? Signs and wonders? The Lord just grants. He grants it tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. Good news. And there they preached the gospel glad tidings and there they preached the gospel they didn't preach their own problems they didn't preach current affairs they didn't preach the doubts in the land they didn't preach the recession in the land they didn't preach the problems in the nation there they preached the gospel and the gospel will walk in your life. Yeah. Verse 8, verse 8 says, And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb. Now, that's where the experts of the world don't have any solution. He was born like that. Something happened to the eyes even before the person was born. Look at the eyes shriveled, short, withered, even from the time the fellow was born. Look at the legs, all paralyzed. Before the child was born, there, there's no human solution, but there's a heavenly solution. I said, there's a heavenly solution. Yeah. And that solution is here for you today. Yeah. Give me a good, good amen. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing things like that. Here we were in the crusade. And then all the people were there at the stadium. Oh, like this, this one is a mini stadium. You see that ground floor and that and that. This is a mini stadium. And as we are there today, what happened in this stadium will happen in this mini stadium. Yeah. And so, this child, one leg, all flesh, without bone, one leg. And then he will use a stick and wind. The, he is used to that now, this boy, because the boy is, I think, uh, between 12, 15, whatever, and he'll be hopping around with one leg and one, one, uh, and one, one, uh, one stick. And I was praying. And I said, in Jesus' name, I thought at that time, at that time, I thought it's when you finish the prayer, and you say, in Jesus' name, I thought that final amen will do a miracle. But... When you mention Jesus, whether at the beginning, in the middle, or the end, something will happen. Yeah. And something will happen to you today. Yeah. And so we said, oh Lord, there you are, the God of wonders, the God of all power. You're giving us the name Jesus that has all authority. As we mentioned that name in the middle of the prayer, all of a sudden, a creative miracle took place. And bone was created in that leg. And the boy threw the stick away. And he stood like I'm standing. And he walked like I'm walking. And he ran like I can run. And the mother opened her eyes and saw the boy. Now a creative miracle has taken place. And there's bone in that leg. Tap your leg, tap your leg, tap your leg. 
bone in that leg and the boy was ranting and walking and running and the mother was much with joy excited because even before the end of the prayer a miracle had happened and the boy was born that way that name is here tonight that problem you came with that problem you were born with here is the night the night of signs and wonders the night of power the night of miracle it will happen again in jesus name not only far away that time we're going to taraba next week i said we're going to taraba next week I, I can i can see now we were at the stadium there just a few years ago and this boy about i think 20 between 21 and 23 years of age he was born in this condition hands paralyzed legs paralyzed and any device it means you have right a board and there were some little robbers under that board and they'll be crawling like this and pushing a that robber i cannot demonstrate it very well because you have to go to the ground and you know be doing that and now we said we're having crusade and somebody brought that young man and it was he had his instrument the board and we said lord you can do all things <laughs> now whoever is there i didn't know he was there i pray lord touch them now heal them if you are lame rise up and walk and the boy the young man strength came to the feet strength came to the arms he took that board and raised it up like this and he was walking god had done it for you tonight miracles you have never seen will come upon your life in jesus name we ended that crusade on a good note people excited people happy miracles of every type happened and now we were about to leave and you know the car was parked in front of the office there that i used and unknown to the security people three people that were paralyzed one on the wheelchair i can see them now the other two lying down on the march. And they put them in front, you know, beside the car at the door that I will take to enter the vehicle. And when we came out, the head of security had been with me, so he didn't know what had happened. When he got there, he said, why, why, why did you put these people there? He prayed for the people. I said, leave them alone, don't touch them, leave them there. And so before I entered the car, I said, in Jesus' name be healed. In Jesus' name be healed. In Jesus' name be healed. Three of them, three of them. Then I opened the door of the car and I entered in. As we were going, before we got to the gate of that, uh, you know, of that side, I had shouting, was stopped. What had happened? The first one, got up. The second one got up. The third one got up. Healed. Delivered. And they were walking normal. You will walk normal. I challenge your problem tonight. I challenge the difficulty you have tonight. And I say, in Jesus' name, be healed. Yeah. And so, and so, in verse 8, there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from 
his mother's womb, who never had walked. Look at verse 9. The same had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Verse 10 said, he didn't touch him, said, he didn't go to him, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he lived and walked. It's your turn. And he lived and walked. It's your turn. That swelling will vanish away. That fibroid will vanish away. That issue of blood will dry up. That thing that is swollen in your armpit will dry up tonight. That cancer will be healed. Those blind eyes will open tonight in Jesus' name. He lived and walked. I live and walk. I receive my miracle. Stand up now in your miracle. Stand up now in your miracle. The miracle is there. The signs and the wonders tonight will pass through your body. And that miracle, that miracle power will work. And you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Close your eyes, open your mouth. Just tell the Lord in a few words what you want tonight. And then I will confirm it for you in the name of the Lord. Tell him, tell him, tell him. You have a challenge with any load of sin. Tell him, you'll take them away. You have a challenge with guilt, with condemnation. Tell him. He'll take everything away. You have any challenge with any mountain? Tell him. A roll that mountain away. Tell him. You have any challenge with impossibilities in your marriage? Your marriage? There's been no child. Tell him. Tonight, the night of supernatural wonder in your life. You have a load you've been carrying for a long time. It's heavy on your head, heavy on your back, heavy in your life. Tell him, tonight, he'll take away that load. Tears of sorrow, tears of regret. Tell him, he loves you. Tonight, He'll take everything away. Impotent. In any area of your body, tell him. He'll take the impotence away. Blindness. Deem eyesight. Tell him. You'll heal that eyesight. Diabetes. Telling. Healing for you. Your body is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. You cannot walk. You cannot stand. You cannot move like you used to move. Tell him. Miracle for you tonight. Poverty has knocked at the door and entered the family. Tell him tonight, he replace poverty with prosperity. Failure. You are doing your best. Your best is earning the worst. Tell him, I'll take failure away and bring success. Fear, 
Just fear life. Just fear nothing. And it bothers you. Tell him, faith will cancel fear. Anxiety, worry, confusion, discouragement, tell him. You'll make your life complete. A spirit driving you in a direction you don't want to go in life. And you say, I have no power against that driving spirit. Tell him. The name of Jesus will drive them all away. Any concern you have, any problem you have, you come to the place, to the point of solution, supernatural solution. Your prayers are answered in Jesus' name. My prayers are answered. My prayers are answered. No more doubt. Say it aloud. No more doubt. No more unbelief. No more fear. No more crying, no more sorrow, my prayers are answered. Wonder for you, supernatural breakthrough for you. The Lord will put a testimony, a song in your mouth in Jesus' name. If you know. If you're sure that your prayers are answered, only then you raise up your hand for confirmation. No doubt, no unbelief, no sorrow, no sadness, no going back to past ideas. My prayers are answered. I will see my miracle. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for everyone here. I pray those who have asked for forgiveness, those who have asked for salvation, those who have asked for restoration, grant it unto them in Jesus' name. Lord, sorrow is not of you. Sickness is not of you. Weakness is not of you. Calamity is not of you. Captivity is not of you. Everything the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life, be it uprooted now in Jesus' name. All the planting of the enemy, Lord, uproot it from their lives. All the planting of the enemies of progress uproot from their life in Jesus' name. That sickness coming and going, coming and going, you will not come again. Heal everyone in Jesus' name. The pain in their body the plague in their body, the sickness in their body, 
the disease in their body. Lord, by your mighty power, heal them in Jesus' name. Oppression, break every yoke right now in Jesus' name. Problem in the brain, problem in the mind. Lord, everyone without exception. Touch them, deliver them, set them free in Jesus' name. Long-standing problem that they even say, this one is incurable, that one is incurable. God of love, God of mercy, God of might, God of power. Lord, I pray. This your beloved child, son, daughter. Lord, I pray, touch him, touch her, heal in Jesus' name. That visible sickness in the armpit, in the tummy, in the leg, the eyes, dim cannot see now, ears that cannot hear tongues that cannot speak. Lord, I pray, supernatural wonder. Yeah. Heal them in Jesus' name. Yeah. They say there's no job in town. But Lord, I know you'll make a way where there's no way. Yeah. Where everybody goes, they didn't find something. Your children here will find. Yeah. Provide jobs for the jobless in Jesus' name. Yeah. And every good thing you have lost in the past, restoration now. Yeah. Replacement right now. Yeah. The blessings of the Lord be multiplied in your life. Nobody here will go empty-handed tonight. Something miraculous. Something supernatural. Something of the great might of the Lord do for everyone in Jesus' name. To my good side here, testimony. In my front here, testimony. Yeah. To my right hand side, testimony. Yeah. Online, everywhere, in every congregation, testimonies in Jesus' name. Do yeah. the impossible, the incredible, yeah. the unbelievable yeah. in every life. Yeah. Now, and henceforth, yeah. now and always, yeah. doors be open to you supernaturally. Yeah. Receive, yeah. receive, yeah. and retain everything you receive tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, we know you've done it. There's testimony there, there's testimony there. Lord, we thank you. It is done in Jesus' name. We praise you, Lord. There's confirmation in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray.